When it comes to the world of numismatics, Q. David Bowers has just about seen it all. Here in this wide-ranging video filmed at the 2009 Summer ANA Show in Los Angeles, the renowned numismatist and author recounts the changes he has seen in numismatics since he attended his first coin show in 1955. Even with the technology available today that was beyond the scope of human imagination in 1955, Dave still feels that personal service is the most important factor in the coin business, and unfortunately, it is not as prevalent as in years past. He also cautions about the serious threat posed by Chinese counterfeiters and how that threat has made certification of coins by PCGS and other third-party certification services more critical than ever before. So enjoy this relaxed, informative session with David Bowers. We're sure you'll appreciate his observations. Since you've been in the market for a long time, can you tell us what has changed today compared to, let's say, 40 years back or 30 years well, back? Well, I attended my first ANA convention in 1955, and here I am in uh, 2009. So in 1955, if you had come to the ANA convention, uh, we didn't have an internet, of course. We didn't have a fax machine. We didn't have even uh, uh, toll-free long-distance dialing. If you wanted to call, uh, if you wanted to call uh, Irvine, California, which probably didn't exist then, uh, it was probably a ranch. Uh, uh, but if you wanted to call Santa Monica, California, or, or Santa Ana, you would uh, call the operator and say, "I'd like to make a long-distance call to Santa Ana, California, to Mr. David Hall. Well, what's the number?" Uh, I'm not even sure they had area codes. Uh, and they said, well, just a minute, we'll see if we can get him or else we'll call you back. Um, almost all mail, almost all business was done by mail. You wrote checks, you looked in the mail what came in in the morning. The only reference book was the guidebook of United States coins that came out every year. There was no coin dealer newsletter. There was no uh, uh, coin world that comes out every week, no numismatic news. Uh, there was no grading guide of any kind. Uh, I might call something extremely fine, but another dealer might say, well, I think that's AU. Uh, I might say it's uh, fake, and other, somebody else might say it's genuine. So collectors and dealers were pretty much on their own. You had to, you had to be knowledgeable. Now today, in two, uh, fast forward to 2009, uh, as has been said, uh, Almost anyone can deal in coins because of the certification services, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, great amount of information. Uh, the other day I uh, looked, I was writing an article for the numismatist and I looked on Google for the 1882 CC dollar. It's a Morgan dollar, not too rare. And uh, they have over 10,000 listings. Then I, then I happen to remember that uh, Microsoft started something called Bing recently, the sort of a competitor to Google. They have over a million listings. So if somebody wants to find out about an 1882 CC dollar, you know, what would you do with a million listings? You don't, have, you don't live long enough. So you revert to where things, you, you have information overload. So you need simplicity and you go back to the guidebook of the United States coins to see what it is. Uh, today we have, uh, uh, we have cell phones. I gave a talk today and my cell phone rang twice. If I want to talk to David Hall uh, and have his cell phone number, I can uh, write him a message, uh, talk to him or whatever I want to in two minutes. Uh, no matter where he is, he could be in Italy. Uh, and so things have changed and uh, I believe that you know some of this is good, some is bad, but whatever it happens to be, uh, it's where we are. We can't, we can't change it. One thing I have found that uh, today in 2009, that uh, personal service is very rare. Uh, unlike 1955 when I first went to my first show, uh, if you call up the phone, if you call up the phone company and want a, uh, information, you know you probably can't get it easily. If you want to talk to an airline, maybe Southwest Airlines might be an exception, but if you want to talk to almost any other airline and ask like what kind of plane am I uh, going to be on or, or can I ask about this, they'll you know, have you punch in 27 numbers and, and might get back to you from someone who doesn't know much at all. It's very impersonal and I find in the coin business, even like at the show here, if somebody comes by and says, uh, hi Dave, you know, can you explain 
why this PCGS MS66 Maryland commemorative, which I'm pointing to, uh, tell me about it. Uh, why is it rare or something? And I, I could say, look, they made 25,000. Uh, if, if the striking, look at the nose of Cecil Calvert, sometimes it's flat. And they'd come back and say, oh, well, thank you. You know, uh, most people don't know that or, or they won't talk to me. Uh, I'm, I'm not buying anything, I'm just curious. And, but uh, here at the whole, all the stacks people would be very happy if somebody comes up and says, look, you know, well, we had a, a few minutes ago, somebody came up with a lesser dollar, which is a little metal type thing made in 1901. And he didn't want to buy anything. He didn't want to sell it, but he probably spent 15 minutes here talking about its history. And we like to do that sort of thing. But uh, that becomes increasingly rare today. Uh, so the advantage is, I think, uh, personal service, which probably was in effect 100 years ago before any of us were born, uh, has disappeared and now it's more valuable. As to whether information is more valuable, who knows? If someone says, look, I put out a new electronic price list on Morgan Dollars, uh, they probably would get a bunch of yawns or, oh, that's nice. So, uh, you know, we're in, it's a technology world, things change. And I can say that one of the, one of the great threats now and this is uh, uh, in favor of PCGS, are Chinese uh, counterfeit coins. Uh, yesterday, I, or two days ago, Beth Deicher, editor of Coin World, was giving a class on these counterfeits, and I attended the final exam, and I told Beth, this is sort of anecdotal, uh, I said, I'm coming, she said, I have 10, or no, I have six Morgan dollars here. Uh, one is genuine and six are uh, or five are fake, but hardly anyone can tell them apart. So I said, there are a whole bunch of people. I said, okay, well, this is off the record, Beth. This is uh, not, you, you don't take notes on this because I don't want to be embarrassed. So she showed me all these and I had a magnifying glass and she said, what one do you think it is? And I, I wrote it on an envelope. She said, you're right. And I said, okay, everybody, this is front page news for Coin World. <laughs> But one, th one thing I think that is going to be good for PCGS and any of your illustrious competitors, but PCGS, uh, uh, you know, is a, the, the original firm, is that uh, getting a, a certified coin by a well-known company that stands behind it is going to be more important uh, this year and going forward than ever before. I'm not even talking about grading. And I, I think this is, uh, this is going to be very good for you and uh, good for the hobby. Right now, if, uh, if somebody uh, writes and, uh, or sends a, a message like, I have a, an 1878 CC trade dollar, uh, what we do now is we say, uh, uh, we don't want, you know, and it, what is it worth? And this is new. We say at Stacks, we love 1878 CC trade dollars. They're worth several thousand dollars each. But before, uh, we cannot evaluate it on the, on the internet because the minute I say Dave Bowers thinks it's worth $4,000 when I haven't seen it, someone will say, oh, Dave said it's worth $4,000, but well, of course I haven't seen it. So I say send it to a certification service such as PCGS uh, or your competitor NGC, uh, but uh, I've had a, more of a connection with PCGS. And if it's certified by PCGS, uh, please let us know. We would love to auction it. And uh, I would not have said that uh, 10 years ago. I would have said, uh, I would, I, you know, certified if you want to, but send it in, let us look at it. So that, that is going to be maybe one of the greatest challenges that we all have for the next few years is, uh, is counterfeit determination and certification. Mm -hmm.